everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Honesty Bilal. I'm your host, Bilal Med, and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Toledo. And this is Honesty Bilal, the show for the aspiring ophthalmologist, where I sit down and talk to medical students interested in ophthalmology, mm -hmm. residents training in ophthalmology, and current ophthalmologists in the field today. My guest today is Dr. Paul Chan. Dr. Chan is the professor and head of ophthalmology and visual sciences at the University of Illinois in, in Illinois Eye and Ear Infirmary. He's the John H. Pantin Professor of Ophthalmology, the Director of the Pediatric Retina and Retinopathy Prematurity Service, the Co-Director of the Vitro-Retinal Surgery Fellowship Program. And he did his bachelor's degree at the University of Pennsylvania, followed by his medical degree at Temple University, followed by a residency at Cornell University and a fellowship at Mass Eye and Ear at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Chan is a core team member of the Retinopathy Prematurity Symposium. He leads the Global Education Network of, for Retinopathy Prematurity. He's a consultant for Orbis and the Helen Keller Institute, and also the, on the board of trustees for the Helen Keller, Helen Keller Institute. He's the editor of the American Academy of Ophthalmology's Global Ophthalmology Guide. He's on numerous editorial boards. He's an active member of major ophthalmic societies such as Vit Buckle Society, and he's won numerous awards, including the uh, American Academy of Ophthalmology Achievement Award, the Senior Achievement Award, uh, and the Ro Paul Kaiser International Fellowship. So Dr. Chan, quite an introduction. I'm sorry if I didn't do you justice. There's so much that you've accomplished. So number one, thank you for joining me. It's an honor and uh, can't wait to talk about your story. Thanks, Paul. Um, so I, you know, as, as we were talking to you about this earlier, you know, this, this is a really neat venue. Um, thanks for doing this for the public, especially for the medical students. I, you know, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, nice introduction, I appreciate it. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, most importantly, I'm a, uh, I'm a father. Uh, I'm a son, I'm a brother, and, and I'm a husband, right? And, and a friend, and friend to many people. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great. So, you know, I think the first thing you, you wanted me to touch on was why ophthalmology, right? Yeah, I do. I want to talk about, you know, why ophthalmology for you? Why retina? Your story in the field and how you got there. Okay. Um, so, first off, is, is the volume okay? Yeah, volume's great. Yeah. Okay, you're great. So why ophthalmology? So first off, you know, and, and I think this is sort of something that you'll, you'll see time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of children um, who are children of ophthalmologists go into ophthalmology, sure. right? You'll see it. So very simply, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the first answer, which is I like it. Sounds really simple. Yeah. Second is um, I, uh, I'm, the, I'm the son of an ophthalmologist. Okay. Um, both of my parents are ophthalmologists. My wife is an ophthalmologist. Oh, interesting. Um, I grew up in ophthalmology, specifically academic ophthalmology. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of that fact, right? Sure. It's not something I, I run away from, at, um, at least now, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that when I was going through this journey, um, you know, the first thing was, you know, I, I actually did not want to do ophthalmology. I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. Um, and a lot of that was because, you know, I, I wrestled. You know, I played rugby. I was I was very um, athletic. It was it was it was something that I wanted to do, and I thought I would love it. Uh, I didn't, mm. right? So I started doing my rotations. Uh, didn't love the surgeries, and then, but but enjoyed the time I was spending in ophthalmology. So my first year of medical school, I was very lucky to uh, to work with this this gentleman, uh, Bill Benson at Wills. He was just a really incredible mentor to me, mm. right? He believed in me, and you know, I ended up liking it, right? Yeah. And, and regardless of whether or not, uh, you know, I was going to get in or not, um, I just, I just, I was lucky and I got yeah. in. And it's something that I truly, truly love. And because you make an incredibly impactful, uh, you know, effect on everybody's lives that, that, that you touch. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, it's a great field, you know, yeah. and I think very importantly, the people are amazing. Yeah. Right? We touched on this right earlier. So, you know, I, I, I asked you, why do you want to do ophthalmology? Mm -hmm. All right. And one, I think one of the things that resonated with you was you just enjoy the people that you work with. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's one thing I, I've also noticed is that, you know, I've interviewed some of, several of uh, the people, you know, pretty well and, and, or, or sat down with them. I, I sat and had brunch with Dr. John Kitchens just last weekend. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to Dr. Luck and Paul. I've talked to, you know, these people in, in retina specifically, or even ophthalmology, but everybody seems to have this idea and it's something you just alluded to as well that it's not really about yeah sure i mean there's numbers there's 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 objective measures but the hard work the a bit of it's almost a bit of hard work a little bit of luck and uh you know just being interested in the work itself interested in the people interested in the field so it seems like i think that's one thing that resonates is that even though this target audience is medical students you know even from a 
head of a department down to a third year medical student or fourth year medical student that everybody has that certain bond at least. And I think that's the cool thing uh, about having people like you on my show. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you, you know, the community of people that you work with and that you interact with for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you know, it matters. Right. And um, I think ophthalmology is pretty cool and the people are fantastic and, and they're good people, you know, right. so not only are, are you, are you constantly interacting with really, really smart people who are innovative and creative and doing interesting things, you know, and, and are truly passionate about what they do. They're nice. Um, so I, I think that that really matters. Right. And, and I think that whatever you do, you have to be absolutely passionate about it uh, because this is day in, day out, you mm -hmm. know, you're, you're working. It's an extension of your life. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and it's something that growing up, you know, I'll share this. I mean, it's something I saw my parents really love doing, right. And the community and, and the residents they would bring to the house and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the international trainees that, you know, we'd have stay with us for, for yeah. months. And, um, you know, and this global community of people that uh, really enjoy being together and learning from each other. So it resonates, right, as a yeah. kid, even though you resist, right, and you touched on this when we spoke earlier, mm -hmm. you, you don't necessarily want to do what your parents did. Yeah. Right? You have the rebel rebellious sort of tendency, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, you know, so for me, I, you know, that, that was part of the issue too, right? You didn't necessarily want to do something that you know your parents did because first off you know you, you, you're you, know, you question it but but also you know if you kind of do well is it something that people will sort of scrutinize and so but at the end of the day it, it, what it came down to i liked it That's i liked it initially and then i was i was lucky to get into residency and you had really great mentors you know and that's that's important right i would you know i i, I got into cornell for residency and um i i got three interviews four interviews total Right. And, and, uh, yeah, I was, I was really, really fortunate and, um, people believed in me and it just kind of, you know, my, you know, like every career, you just kind of go down this path and you take yeah. it. And, and I'm sure many people that you talk to, it's, it's a similar type of road. Absolutely. I think the thing is I've, I've really realized is that everybody seems to, who, who's at least in your level of their stage of the career, they could talk about how, you know, they worked really hard and sometimes the opportunities weren't there, but when the opportunities came, they really just yeah. went for it and they didn't hold back. And they just, you know, they said, I, they, there's that gut check, that gut feeling that you have to really invest in it now and just go for it. So yeah. it's really cool to hear that, you know, you, and honestly, that's the point of the show, honestly, Bilal, is that you talk about those, those little, you know, challenges we all have internally about, oh, do I, is this fit who I am? Does this, am I following footsteps of somebody else or, or am I doing what's meant for me? And, and I think it's really cool to share your perspective because you have that, uh, you know, from a biological standpoint, sure, your family was involved in ophthalmology, but you found it through your own, um, through you questioning yourself mostly about what you want to do, what you want to contribute. So I think for the listeners out there, that's really important to uh, maybe for us to remember that it's about what you think you can add value to and, and do something uh, that you're passionate about. So yeah, and, and that you have to believe in it. So cool. that's, so that's why ophthalmology, you know, ret retina is a, I think a similar type of situation where again, you, you know, you're taking advantage of opportunities, mm. right? And, um, you know, my dad used to say, uh, you know, he, and he was, he was a chair of a department. He was the chair of Temple. And actually the first Chinese, uh, the first chair of Chinese descent um, in, in the U.S. And he used to say, to me, you know, Paul, you know, I, I could have, I could do a lot of things. You know, I could do refractive, I could do your business. But the one thing I, I couldn't do was retina, right? Because he wasn't formally trained in it. Mm. And um, and it's you know it's it's a very high tech field you know it it does take formal training um, you know in that generation and he I think he would have been in his nineties now if he if he were still alive but uh, you know the there was a sort of evolution and and I think that that really resonated with me mm -hmm. you know, it, when I, I always remember that and yeah. um, went from there but but you know retina I think you know it blends a lot of different things you know the medical surgical mm -hmm. right the, it's I mean, you can see the growth, you know, since 2006, even before then, not just, you know, not just from a therapeutics perspective, but also surgically, right? So it, it's really a field that's evolving and growing. Mm -hmm. And I love the technology, right? So there's a lot of different things that appeal to, to me. But again, the, the, the issue for you, and, you know, I asked you this question, why do you want to do retina, right? Sure. So let's, let's throw it back at you. I think the thing is for me is something that you touched on too. I think it's like the, you know, the advances, I think it's uh, the bit of, um, you know, there's that hard work aspect. Sure. Obviously, obviously, but if you've gotten this far, I think in your, in your 
at least as far as I've gotten, at least if you've gone to this far in med school, I don't think it's bad to think about, you know, what the long-term plan is, like, what do you want to do? And I think it's, if you're interested in neuroscience, if you're interested in a field that's rapidly evolving, if you're interested in the people in the field who are kind enough to, who you, who you feel like they're, they're willing to show you the way, I think it's just natural. I think it's just one of those things where, you know, I think my, uh, I'm pretty open about the fact that I think I'm interested in right now. And I think it's okay to be open about it because I think that's something that, you know, it's, it's as a host of a show called Honestly Below, why not be honest about it, right? So I think it's, um, you know, I think it's, there's so many exciting advances in gene therapy and optogenetics and, and AI and, and stem cell therapy. And, and it's just something that if I had to pick five articles to read in front of me, I'm going to pick the one that's about something in, in Britain. I think it's just something I would just, it's, it's, it's naturally part of nervous tissue. It's, it's extension of the brain. So, you know, I just think that there's, if, if, if you're nerding out, might as well nerd out on retina. That's my, <laughs> that's my belief. That's my philosophy. So, and uh, it doesn't hurt that I've met really cool people. Uh, you know, Dr. Dr. Shreeder, who's probably the first person to really, you know, for no, re no real reason, I guess. I mean, he didn't have to do this, but he said, okay, this kid needs a rotation. I'm going to help him out. I'm going to tweet back at him and uh, help him out with the project. And he didn't have to do that. No one knew who I was. And, uh, you know, that was, that showed me that I think when someone believes in you like that, you really, really want to give that back to others and you're interested in what they're doing. So that's yeah. kind of my story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, I think that matters, right? So it's, it's about a lot of it. It's also about who takes an interest in you. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and takes the time to, to, to mentor you through this process. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting. One just unsolicited advice. One, one of the things that um, I will often tell residents and, and medical students as they go through this process is don't be selectively enthusiastic. Sure, sure. Right. So yeah. as, as you go through your training, especially as an ophthalmology resident, mm -hmm. and you and you touched on this, and I and I, you know, I, I appreciated the answer is that your primary goal is to be an ophthalmologist, right? You know, and and to train how to be an ophthalmologist and a good doctor, right? Yeah. I mean that that matters. Um, and when you choose your specialty, you know, because this is something that a lot of people go through this process about. You know, you go through your 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 PGY two year, and mm -hmm. then you you're you're starting a PGY three year. And you, you, you're thinking, okay, do I want to do comprehensive when I'm done or do I want to do some sort of specialty? And, you know, it's, 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 it's a really hard choice because, you know, if you're at a program where there's a lot of depth, mm -hmm. right? So if you go to one, you know, a bigger program, you know, like ours, so USC, where you have, you know, excellent faculty and, and really world-renowned people in, in each field mm -hmm. and they're doing complicated things and you see the, the whole spectrum of disease, it becomes confusing because everything's really cool, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I guess, you know, one, one way to look at it too is, and to your point, you know, if you're going to nerd out on something, yeah. right, what really sparks your interest yeah. um, is think about the most mundane thing mm -hmm. in that specialty and the day-to-day, -day, what am I going to see? And are, is that going to, are you still going to love it, right? And I, and I think that that's something that, uh, you know, I thought about a lot in, you know, even something that may seem non-urgent or, or, or not so, you know, such a, like a fascinoma. Yeah. Um, I love retina. Yeah. There right? you go. Yeah. And, and I love, I love kids, right. I love right. the pediatric part of retina. Um, so I think these are things to think about, but it's a hard choice. Right. Absolutely. At the end of the day. And I think that's something that, you know, your good friend, Dr. Kittens told me uh, over brunch last weekend too. He said, even if you're interested in a, selective part of the field make sure that you try to do everything every right. rotation as if you're going to do that for the rest of your life because everything has layers to it you need to be able to be converse you know conversate with people mm -hmm. who have expertise in something that you don't have an expertise in so that you can bounce ideas off each other and uh like you said most importantly get the best outcome uh for a patient so yeah absolutely that's a good point to make there so let's talk about finding a niche so you've obviously um you, you're invested in doing, uh, you know, retinopathy prematurity is, is a passion of yours in the field and something that you've really advanced and made advances in and, and uh, you on an international level as well. So how did you develop that interest? And, and not only after developing it, how did you expand on it and try to bring it to where you could educate others across the world and, and help them or, or learn from them? Um, I feel like this is, this is, this is a really long conversation. No, right. so, yeah, we can cut yeah, it. I, mean, you want. No, go I, I can get, I'm trying to give you a short answer to that one. Sure. Um, luck, mm. right? Um, opportunity that was presented to me. It was interesting. I actually was offered a job to go back to Cornell prior to uh, starting fellowship. So, you know, it was okay. one of these, these arrangements. Initially, I was actually not going to go back to do pediatric retina or ROP. Okay. 
Okay. I was going to do ultrasound research. And Tom Lee, who, who I mentioned earlier, yeah. was the pediatric retina person who was doing melanoma, ROP, so forth. And then Tom decided to leave. Hmm. Okay. And he said, Paul, you're going to be doing all of the ROP now. And okay, here we go. That was one of those things. I mean, I, I could have said, you know, well, you know, I don't want to do all of the ROP, you know, and we, we just need to, and I did it and I loved it. Mm. Right. And I had a lot of help, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, cause one of these, just to keep some in mind, ROP is one of these things where you have to be all, there all the time. Right. Yeah, if you don't right. have someone else. Right. So, yeah. you know, I had this, uh, it's a friend of mine, um, Sang Lee, who was there and helped me out and mm -hmm. Charlie Mango helped me out, you know, so we, we split the, the burden, you know, it, it worked out and it became a really strong academic interest of mine. And down the street, uh, was a guy who's a pediatric ophthalmologist, this guy, Michael Chang, oh, yeah. um, who's now the director of the NEI. Right. Um, and this was 2006. Uh -huh. Okay. So he was doing ROP there. At Columbia and we started collaborating mm. right and it just went from there and it, it was a, it's been a really fun ride yeah and uh you know and you meet this really great group of people like Nina Barakal right sure. and all those folks that are now you know you know it's a, it's a great group sure. and that you have a community that is very very um inclusive and wants to help you I think it's awesome yeah I think the thing that's really cool too is that there's like a lineage to it almost where yeah. it's someone gravitates towards you kind of pulls you in or maybe opportunity pulls you in because there's just nobody filled a need and sometimes if you just say okay I'll do it and then you know I think I've heard really cool stories about different people who I've had on the show talk about that kind of experience where they just kind of there was a need for it so they said okay I'll do it and then it became somehow became like the, the biggest focus of their career so just kind of kind of cool I think for us to keep in mind to keep your ears out to keep your eyes out and just go you know say yes to things say yes it doesn't hurt yeah. if, if you can do it, take the time, do it, and uh, just say, try it. Why not? So, yeah, go for it. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I think that it's easy to walk away from something when it looks hard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and just say, okay, but that just looks hard. <laughs> it's going to take too much time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes, well, I think a lot of times, the hardest things are the most worthwhile. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's my two cents. Yeah. Okay. That's worth yeah. it. No, that's the thing that you need to know. I think that's, I, I think I can tell you that I definitely resonate with that. I think a lot of students resonate with that uh, in a year where we're all looking at challenges, where we're seeing there's, there's hard things to come virtual interviews. How are we going to do this? How are we going to find a good fit? Like yeah. you know, things we, I think it's nice to know and hear from you all that it's going to work out. Like you're going to be where you need to be. The destiny is going to find you. I know it's a cliche thing to say, but it's just like, you're going to find your own fate and then just go with yeah. it. I think the seeing the laid back nature of how you how you all talk about your stories, uh, it makes number one me as the first audience member to hear it, it makes me feel at ease, and I think it'll hopefully make others feel at ease too. So let's talk about you know, and I know you you don't like to particularly you, you told me before we got on here that you're not the kind of person who talks too much about himself, but how about we talk about the the responsibilities of being the head of a department? So talk about your role of being uh, the head at UIC and and the and the division, and not only you know being the head of the division, but how does it, how does, it's a team job, obviously. So I'm sure that, you know, from, from the staff and the techs to the, the yeah. medical students, to the residents, fellows, faculty, how it all comes together. And as you as the head, what are your responsibilities? What are the rewards and challenges of being in that position? Yeah, I mean, it, again, you know, I, I think that, so, you know, what is leadership, right? Leadership is service. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, it, I'm very fortunate to, to be able to, to be the chair of the department here. Um, the and why am I fortunate? Because the people are great. Yeah. Right. The institution is great. Um, this is, you know, one of the most storied programs in the country. Yep. Right. It's got over 160 year history. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, my my take on this is, you know, what is it like to be the a department head? Yeah. Um, it's complex. Sure. Right. Um, incredibly rewarding, mm -hmm. uh, and incredibly rewarding because. The, the, the most important thing to me mm -hmm. is that I can help people. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. why do we become doctors? Exactly. Right. Because we can help our patients. We can take care of people. And I think that, uh, you know, you'll hear a lot about this, but I think as physicians, it's important to have physician leaders mm -hmm. um, who understand the system or try to work with the system 
um, and advocate, you know, not just for our patients, but for our faculty, our trainees, our staff, yeah. right? In a way that someone who isn't a physician um, may not be able to relate as much to. Sure. Right. So, you know, in my mind, it's, it's incredibly fulfilling, right? You, you, you're able to uh, help move people forward, help promote their careers. Yeah. Um, I learn every day, mm-hmm. right? When, you know, one of the, the things that's really neat here is that I work with a lot of senior faculty who, were, who are and, you know, who were and, and continue to be my mentors. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, I learn from them. You know, so like Jenny Lim, I remember when I was a resident um, and she was at Doheny at the time. And, you know, I'm, it's, it's like this, right? I'm, I'm writing, I was like, oh, it's Jenny Lim. And yeah. she's, she's, you know, continues to be a mentor of mine and, and Bill Mueller and, you know, working with people that I've, I've trained with like Yannick Liederman, mm. um, you know, and it's, it's amazing to me to see a, a community of people that's so collaborative. Yeah. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, the, one of the things that, about being a full-time faculty member, so again, when, when you apply to, to, to residency, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things that a lot of residents will say, or resident applicants will say is I want to go into academics, mm-hmm. right? What does that mean to you? So here, it's a, I'll ask you, what does that mean to you? Well, if someone told me that, or if I said that, if, if you like, so if you want to say you're going, you want to go into academic medicine, sure. what, right. what, what does that yeah, mean to so you? I think that if I had to think about academic medicine, I would say, you know, I'm interested in research. I'm interested in mentorship, teaching, obviously. Uh, I want to be able to allot a specific time that's for teaching and not have to do the, have the pressure of teaching just, uh, you know, in a clinic space where I don't know if I can actually teach the learner who's with me. Whereas in academics, it's more, it's, it's known. It's a known expectation that you are, you're there to teach too. Um, and then again, like you said, the collaboration aspect of academics is pretty nice. I think there's that ability to, you know, run down the hall and ask somebody who's an expert in a different field than you to say, hey, what do you, can you come see this patient? Just check on this. I want to make sure I got this right. So I think that's, and then the mentorship aspect, like you said, you know, there's a, there's the ranking system of a professor, associate professor, assistant professor, but if you're in the right place, uh, I think the right mentors will guide you to be part of the same team as them. So I think that's nice if you're, if you're at the right institution. So that's how I naively see academics. Hopefully that's the right way to see it. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. And, and I, and I think that, uh, when 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 we thought about academic medicine sort of when we were in medical school mm-hmm. we're, we're always thinking about that model of being on full-time faculty somewhere sure right but you can be very academic and not be on full-time faculty and yeah. be in a private practice that is you know very involved in research and teaching and, and so forth and so on and be a thought leader mm-hmm. right so you have to fundamentally make that sort of clear in your mind about this and and you're not necessarily going to know, yeah. Right? Because what you know now is is that 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 model of being on a full time faculty, sure, you know, sort of position. So it's you know why why do we why are we here, right? So fundamentally for me, you know, I you know going back to to where I thought it would be, I thought I'd be, you know, just back in Philly teaching, sure, right? Yeah. And um, but that's the core of a lot of why many of us stay. That's awesome. To, to train residents and to train future leaders. Yeah. Um, and, and that's incredibly important. I think we only see the side of things as medical students from um, somebody who's above us, right? So like I only see yeah. the perspective of the resident or I see the perspective of the fellow or if I get lucky enough to talk to an attending for a little bit, I get their perspective. But I think it's nice because you're obviously my first guest who's the chair and head of a department to see that, you know, what academics means to you and to see that it's the, the leadership is one part, but the teamwork is another part. And uh, again, you mentioned the, the care aspect of what you're there to do at the end of the day and that you're having fun. I think it's okay yeah. to say you're having fun. And that's, uh, that's, I think people who are passionate about what they do, they have fun when they're doing work. It's not work. It's, you know, I think it can be, it can be both. So it's a, it's a good perspective to get. And I think that's something the audience wants to know about. What does it mean to be the chair? I, I don't know too much about what it means to be a chair. So I'm learning too. You know, this is, I can't sit here and say, I know everything about what it means to be a chair. I don't, but that's why, you know, it's good to happen. So, I mean, there's, you know, again, you know, I think it's also it, it, philosophically, it depends on person to person, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. my, my idea of being, being the chair is just making, you know, most importantly, making sure everyone else is successful. Right. Right. And um, doing what I can to, to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, while, of course, you have to have your own vision. You have to have your own expertise. You have to, you know, invest your life into this, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. 
you know, this, this matters. Yeah. Right. And, you know, this, this will make a difference in society and, 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 and how we take care of patients. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, you know, what the, the exciting things too are, are the research. Yeah. Um, and the research enterprise. So, you know, discovery. Yeah. Right? And, we, and you talked to me, it's interesting, you know, before we, 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 we started recording and, 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 and talking through this, the, the whole idea of entrepreneurship, right? Innovation, right? And, and taking discoveries and building systems around it so that you can launch things and, and to be commercialized. That's neat, right? The intersections of, of different fields like engineering and ophthalmology. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going on there that are incredibly exciting. Mm -hmm. right? It's collaborative effort. So, you know, long story short, I, th I think that, you know, being a chair, being a leader, it's about others. Yes. And, it, and it's about service. 100%. Yeah. And I think that's a good way to see it. I think that's what makes the best leaders leaders. So, uh, no, I know, I know that you don't, I, I know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk about yourself and in your perspective. So I'll take the pressure off you here a little bit, but I'll put the pressure on your institution now. So yeah. talk about UIC and, uh, what, what makes a program great. A lot of people who are applying this year know about the program, know about Chicago. Um, and I know there's some, there, a, a huge part of UIC I know about are the global health opportunities. So sure. talk about what you, what you would, want applicants to know about UIC this year and uh, exciting things are happening at UIC. Yeah. So, you know, from my, from my perspective, you know, the UIC and one of the things that really drew me to coming here in the first place about five years ago mm -hmm. uh, are the people and the patients, right. And, and the, the programs. Sure. Um, so one, you know, what's exciting about UIC, there's a lot of things that are exciting. I'll, I'll try to keep this short. Mm -hmm. um, but world-class faculty who are really, really invested in, in the education of the trainees. Mm -hmm. um, I think historically the trainees, and, and you look at the, the history of the program, you know, going, going back to, let's, let's just go with the Mark Goldberg era, you mm -hmm. know, in the 1980s, right? And, and I would say that, you know, you have this lineage of really great leadership here, you know, with Goldberg and then, you know, most recently with Dr. Azar and Dr. Rosenblatt. You know, ophthalmology has been a very, very strong presence in, at UIC, yeah. and has trained and and uh, and nurtured great leaders in the field. Mm. Um, so you have that, right? Sure. You have very complex uh, sort of pathology, mm. right? You will see everything here. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know that's one of the things about residency that I think is very important is that you get to see um, common things. Mm -hmm. right? We get to see the most complex things. And, sure. and you have faculty here who are invested in you to teach you how to manage those things. Sure. Um, so, you know, one, one thing I've noticed in my short time here at UIC is that residents go on and become great physicians, leaders, and actually get great fellowships and do really well in fellowship. Awesome. Right. I mean, but it's work. Yeah. Right? I mean, you work hard. I mean, we have a general eye clinic. Uh, we have a resident run clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of work, but you learn how to be independent. I, I like to believe, you know, again, this is going back to, to how I grew up and what my father used to tell me is that when I'm looking for a residency program, I want a, a good combination of autonomy and supervision. Right. Right. So, you know, I think that we have a very, very good um, supervised autonomy. And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, if you watch The Karate Kid, Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you, yeah. You, you, you may not know, you know, why certain things are happening at the time, but at the end yeah. of the day, you, you, you ultimately realize, you know, right. this is, this is, oh, this is why, right? This is why they're having me do this. I may not be enjoying everything all the time, sure. but the, the result is, you know, an outstanding ophthalmologist. That's a good, honest answer. I mean, that's, a, you know, that the, to say it's going to be hard work, it's going to be tough, it's going to be not everything's going to always make sense. And, uh, I haven't heard anybody say that. I think it's, it's good to know that. that you <laughs> what do you, what do you, how, how's that possible? I think it's like, wait, so I have to do epic modules for, for like six hours? I guess sometimes you have to do that. Stuff. You have to do that stuff. But, you know, uh, we all have to do that sometimes, I think. And that's okay. And I think it's even when you're a pre-med and you're going to med school, you realize, oh, I want to do this. But there's things in med school. You're like, why did I have to do that? But, you know, it's okay. That's part of the, part of the, the path, I guess. And Yeah. And I, th I think, you know, just, just from a perspective, I think that the – the, the, the culture here is, is, is really critical, mm -hmm. right? So the culture in any program that, you, that you're looking at, I think matters, right? So, yeah. you know, we have a very collaborative culture. I think it's very nurturing. It's very, so to me, this is a family, mm. right? This is an extension of my family. It's yeah. that simple. Yeah. And, um, you know, 
it, you have to look at that. Yeah. Right. And you have to talk to the residents. And, you know, when you think about what, what happened to us during COVID-19 mm -hmm. and one of the things that really struck me, you know, and I took the full-time department head job January 16th. Okay. So I, I immediately jumped into COVID-19. Now, obviously I was here for four years prior to that, sure. you know, and it's interim for, you know, nine months, but the, what really struck me was how amazing everyone came together as a department, mm. right? So the, the faculty and the residents and the fellows collaboratively worked together yeah. to manage the situation. Yeah. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't this top heavy, you know, sort of you do this and so forth and so on. It was everyone, you know, basically working together as a group, communicating and trying to solve problems collectively with the staff and, and with everyone in the system. So that, that tells you something about this place. And, you know, I, I will share this. Okay. So, you know, I, I moved from New York, my wife moved from Boston. Mm -hmm. And I think seeing that happen and see, and working with everyone so intimately every single day, you know, I said during a meeting once, we finally feel like we're home. Uh. Right. And, um, it's true. I mean, that tells you something. So the culture itself about UIC uh, is is very family oriented. You know, we we care about each other. That's awesome. And going beyond training, I think that's another thing. So when you look at programs, look at the mentorship. Mm. Right. Yes, it's going to be hard. It's hard work. You know, we talked about this. Yeah. Um, and you're going to get all sorts of uh, interesting things that you do during your program. Mm -hmm. um, but mentorship matters. Yeah. Okay. Now, global health work, right? Again, you know, uh, there was a, there's a faculty member here named Marilyn Miller. Okay. Do, you, do you know who she is? I don't know. No, no, I don't. She, she is one of the luminaries in global health ophthalmology. Global oh, wow. ophthalmology. Okay, that's and, uh, you know, any, anyone involved in the international space will know who she is. And, um, you know, she's a pediatric ophthalmologist. Uh, you know, she, she's one of my mentors when I, when I came here. Uh, incredibly impactful, um, but it's it's a it's a it's a department that one has, you know, leaders who are constantly in, engaged in international ophthalmology. Sure. Uh, so Elmer too has done a lot uh, in anterior step and cornea international training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you during pre-COVID, you know, I'd walk in yeah, yeah. into his clinic and you'd see multiple international trainees here with him. You know, wow. they they come to learn from him. Um, so the, the program itself, uh, has a strong history of training international leaders, right? Wow. Because, you know, maybe, you know, for a variety of different reasons. So when, when Goldberg was here, uh, he established a strong relationship with Aravind Eye Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, in India. And we, uh, we created a new relationship with Aravind Eye Hospital in uh, over the past five years. Um, we have a relationship with Keio University in, in Japan, um, and also, uh, with the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, so, and that was started by Dr. Azar and continues on today. So residents uh, here get a large uh, exposure right. to global ophthalmology, mm. right? It's, it's, it's like in our bones, yeah. so to speak. Uh, and, you know, we believe in it. Yeah. And, and really because it's the, you know, I think one, you learn a lot. Here. Things, things are different abroad versus here. Mm -hmm. um, you learn from each other. So when you, when you, when you have international trainees coming here and, and vice versa, um, again, it grows your network, mm -hmm. right? It grows your family. Uh, and, and that matters. I think a lot of things that, that we're learning now are happening internationally that aren't necessarily happening immediately in the U S yeah. right. So there's that sort of, um, you know, advantage to that. And, and again, you know, I work a lot with American Academy of Ophthalmology mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I serve as the secretary for global alliances for the Academy and, you know, a lot of interchange there. Sure. So there's a lot of opportunities regarding uh, working with the academy, working with the supranational societies. Um, Bill Mueller, who does a lot of work internationally as well. Uh, again, lots of international trainees and so forth. So it's we have we have a I would say you know a, a large menu mm -hmm. of, of opportunities. I think it's just a matter of what your interest is. Absolutely. Right, and that and that goes across the board. So you know we're talking about other things. You know we have. Uh, you know, these, these programs where uh, people can get involved with innovation, right. With surgical instrument development mm. um, with artificial intelligence. Wow. Right. So there's a lot of 
programs that we're trying to build for curriculum for the residents on these these sort of niche fields yeah um that are growing yeah absolutely that's very cool i think the thing is there is that there's a it's not just you know it's not just saying oh yeah we're involved with global health i mean you you're you're mentioning names you're mentioning partnerships and you're mentioning you know that you guys are not only going to these places but you're bringing trainees to your institution i think that says a lot because that's that's cross learning that's like you know sharing the ideas with each other that we're not there to implement our savior complex you know that there's like an idea that these people can teach us so much about what what we can do better too so i think it's really cool um i think it's something anybody who's out there who's interested in, in global health and ophthalmology and applying this year or maybe applying in the years to come make sure you look up uic's global ophthalmology uh, experiences and just uic in general uh for the program there so dr chan let's finish up here with talking about some vbs stuff uh you're now the second vbs member who's on the show actually i think third but uh, you know, you have the you have the advantage of uh, t- sharing your side of the stories now about about VBS and what it's meant to you. Uh, obviously, there's a there's a meeting coming up this upcoming Tuesday, August 18th, yeah. uh, the Greatest Vits. So uh, talk about what v- how VBS started for how you were one of the founding members and uh, your friendships that you formed over the past uh, years from it. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's a lot of things in our lives that are really really special. Mm-hmm. Um, I think VBS has been one of the most special things that I've ever been involved with, and again. It, it go, kind of goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, you know, these relationships that you have, the friendships that you have, uh, you know, you can accomplish a lot of things in life, but at the end of the day, it, in my mind, it's about your relationships and your friends. Mm. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to share a picture. Sure. Let's do I'm it. Gonna, let's change my virtual back. Let's, let's do this. So th- this, I think this will tell you everything. Yeah, there you go. Right. <laughs> so, and I, and I know Ross went through this already, but you know, when, when this started, uh, you know, it was Derek here, Charlie, who was my, my co-resident, Ross and Tom Albini, who were, who were co-fellows in Baylor. Mm-hmm. And, and then ultimately, they, they brought on me and Nina, right? And yeah. then John, who you know, yep. Yep. James, yep. Right? And Andrew Mushfegi, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, Gita's here and Charlie and, and Jorge Fortune. Yeah. And now, and now there's a new generation, right? Sure. So, so the whole point of this was for really geared towards, you know, people that were young. Yeah. We were, we were young at mm-hmm. the time, right? We were just straight out of fellowship. Yeah. No kidding. And, um, you know, I'm no longer young, right? I'm, I'm middle No, eight. no, don't say that. Come on. No, it's no, 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 no. There. It's, it's, it's okay. Uh, and I have to, I have to own that, right? Okay, and yeah. I have no problem with it. Sure. But you know, really, it was, it was, it was a great experience, right? And it was, it was surgically oriented. Yeah. It was uh, about what the things that we talked about, about mentoring. Yeah. You know, relationships, um, listening to the needs of, of that generation, mm. right? And education. Yeah. Right. So this broad mission, and uh, what was fun about it was that. You know, we we were able to work with a lot of more senior retina specialists who took a, an interest in us. Um, it it grew, you know, from a a dinner meeting yeah. uh, with cases and and again, we worked a lot of industry partners who were really kind to us and and worked as partners really. Yeah. And, and it was a very intimate relationship, and it, it grew into this this meeting right yeah. and the society. So fundamentally. You know, I think that when you when you talk about VBS and and we talk about this a lot, again, it goes into this. It's a family. Yeah. And and for me, it was probably one of the most impactful, uh, well, group of people that I've had in my life. Very cool. Right? I think. Yeah. And yeah. I think there's a, there's so much to be said for the, not only the the outfits, but for the people in the in the photo. You know, these are people who are sprout all over the country, very successful and different in retina and. Uh, and all and different fields of retina or different uh, aspects of retina. But to see that you guys are finding the best of the times of COVID to come together still in a virtual platform, it kind of shows that everybody's doing this together. I think obviously this show is came, came out of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, but there's other initiatives that have coming come out of it. And uh, VBS has pivoted, as Dr. Luck and Paul has said, and you guys have uh, still continued to put out educational opportunities for people, for fellows, for, for your society. So I think that these uh that's it kind of shows the strength of uh what friends and, and families can do during times like this and uh 
if there's one theme of the, this episode between you and me, I think that's what you started with, with your, even the introduction after I gave you was family. You mentioned that you're a dad, most importantly, and that you mentioned that even at UIC, you have a family culture. And then with VBS, you have a family culture. So uh, Dr. Chan, just want to thank you for bringing those perspectives from all across the aisle and uh, being my guest. It's such an honor to have you. And, uh, you know, thank you for including me in, in the conversation and asking me this stuff about, you know, questions I, I, I need to answer. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to ask those questions about Epic more. <laughs> Why do we need it? <laughs> Epic, I love Epic. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. We're going through an Epic transition exactly. uh, next exactly. month, so. Yeah. Uh, no, Bella, thanks. I mean, this has been great. Uh, you know, again, good luck to you. Appreciate uh, it. You know, I, I can already tell right now that you will do well. Hope so. um, and, you know, one of the things that I, I definitely appreciated was that you're doing this for medical students, right? You're doing this for your community. Mm -hmm. right? And you're interviewing medical students, you're highlighting them, I, I think, which matters a lot. Sure. Uh, you know, it's not just about you. No, no, no. Trust that's me, I'm not that interesting. <laughs> no, that's, that's a, yeah. I, I, yeah. That'd so, be a boring show, so that, that's not good. <laughs> um, but again, you know, I appreciate the invite and, uh, you know, I look forward to meeting you in person. Yeah, hopefully, Dr. Chan. And, and if you're out there and you're a medical student interested in ophthalmology, interested in being on the show, go ahead and shoot me a direct message on Twitter at Bilal underscore 1712 or on Instagram at Honestly Bilal. Or if you appreciate this, uh, this show, if you, if you want any feedback for me, I'm glad to take that in as well to see what I can do better. Uh, so go ahead and follow or tell somebody about it. And uh, Dr. Chan, is there any place on Twitter that people can find you? I know you're on Twitter as well. I am on Twitter. Um, I think more importantly, my, my residents are on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, and also on, uh, on Instagram, yes. right? which I don't yeah, yep. use that much. But uh, my, my handle is at RVPCHAN, uh, pretty much across the board for, for Twitter and for Instagram. Um, happy to you know, talk to anybody who, who's interested in talking to me. But sure. uh, again, I'm, I don't think I'm that interested in blog. That's fine. Well, hey, URC is interesting. And uh, like, like Dr. Chan mentioned, if you want to check out their Instagram page, uh, I'll put that in the description for this episode on YouTube and for the podcast. So be sure to check it out. Dr. Chan, thank you one more time and uh, look forward to meeting you someday in the future, like you said. Thanks, Paul.